Hi, welcome to another edition of Fleet Momentum video series produced by Automotive Fleet Magazine. I'm Fleet Group Editor Chris Brown. This series is designed to put a spotlight on key leaders, trends, and product offerings in the fleet management industry. This episode is sponsored by and produced in partnership with Wheels Donlin. For this session, I'm pleased to connect with a few leaders from the Wheels Donlin team. Laura Joswiak, Maria Neve, and Suresh Rajapaksa. We will dive into the details of one of today's hottest topics, environment, social, and governance, or simply ESG, and why it's important for fleets to approach their efforts holistically. Well, Laura, Maria, Suresh, welcome. I'll tell you what, let's go around the room first and introduce ourselves. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Hi, I am Laura Joswiak. I am the Senior Vice President of Sales and Client Relations here at Wheels Donlin. I also serve as the expensor, executive sponsor of our ESG initiatives. Hi, I'm Maria Neve, and I'm the Vice President of Electrification and Sustainability at Donlin. And I also serve uh, along with Laura on the ESG committee. Uh, hi, Chris. My name is uh, Suresh Rajapaksa. I'm the Vice President of Client Management for Wheels Donlin. Uh, my job here is to help our strategic account teams partner with our clients to help them uh, achieve their goals. And in recent years, many of those goals have been around sustainability and carbon neutrality, uh, as well as supply diversity. So this is a really pertinent topic for us to discuss. I also lead our Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Committee. So delighted to be joining this conversation. Oh, terrific. Well, hey, let's get right into it. Um, Laura, I'm going to start with you. What makes ESG relevant to fleet? ESG is relevant to everyone, not just fleet and in every industry. Companies that require that we have shared common values, we work toward common goals. It's why ESG is integrated into our culture and into our operations here at Wheels Donlin. From the clients we serve and the communities that we live in to our fellow employees and our supplier partners that we all rely on. A strong ESG program provides insights and established goals for both our internal and external accountability. It's also important to note that ESG should be addressed holistically. Like the results of the wheels Donlin merger, the sum is greater than its separate parts. So many people like to just focus in on the E of ESG, and it's easy to do that, but it's not the only area that's relevant to fleet into what we do for our clients and what we do for ourselves. So we're going to break this down today for this interview. We're going to break it down backwards and start with G, G for governance. At Wheels Donlin, governance means that our leadership team takes accountability to ensure the organization operates with a very high level of security transparency, quality, and fairness. These areas are just good business practices. And when we do them well, our clients experience those benefits. Okay, great. Well, I'll stick with you, Laura, on the, uh, the S and the E areas. Can you elucidate on that a little more? Um, I, I can, but I have passionate experts with yeah. me today. Sure. So I'm going to let Maria and Suresh touch on those areas. They're members of our ESG team, like they've just mentioned, and they, uh, they would be the great experts to talk through it. So I'll give it to Suresh first. Suresh, uh, why don't you uh, sort of start in on the social aspect of ESG? Yeah, absolutely, Chris. And you know, just like all areas of ESG, as Laura mentioned, you know, the, the social aspect should be addressed internally, meaning within your own company and externally in supporting our clients' efforts. Uh, it's important for Wheels Donlin to partner with our clients and prospects, you know, first and foremost, not merely to just check a box. Um, that is the most important thing that I want to kind of um, say in this, in, this, in this answer. It's important that we make an impact in the communities where it really, really matters. So we are really focused on funneling the dollars that our clients spend to the minority groups that need our help and to the communities where we can actually make a difference. Uh, we make an active effort through our procurement channels to build out our networks and to partner with diverse suppliers from diverse dealers to maintenance facilities, to fueling locations, to transportation providers, just to name a few. You know, I'm uh, really proud to say that over the last three years, we have significantly increased our diverse spend uh, and our diverse supplier network. And we are closing in on nearly $1 billion, I said with a B, um, of spend to diverse businesses every year. 
Wow, that's incredible. Maria, I'm going to get to you in just a minute, but I want to keep with you, Suresh, about the importance of like internal initiatives, right? I mean, share some of the work that Wills Donlin is doing to support the social. Yeah, uh, Chris, I'm happy to. Uh, it's something I'm personally really passionate about. Uh, in my opinion, it's important for every company to be a diverse and inclusive place to work. Um, having a diverse workforce brings diversity in ideas. It uh, brings the ability to think about things through different lenses. Uh, being a gay Asian American man myself, uh, you know, I personally wanted to find a place where I felt like I could you know, be myself, uh, wanted to work in an environment where others could also be free to be themselves as well. And I'm proud to say that Wheels Donlin you know, has created an environment where people can actually thrive. Uh, but that alone isn't enough. Uh, you know, over the last few years, we have amped up our efforts to further celebrate, educate, and create awareness around diverse events and activities throughout the year. Um, like I mentioned, I also champion uh, our Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. Uh, this team is comprised of over 60 people from across our combined organizations to help shape the you know, message and really push our DEI initiatives forward. Great. Okay, so Maria, you know, um, certainly the E in ESG, when it comes to fleet, we can think about exactly what that means, right? But, but how and why should organizations be thinking beyond fleet electrification when considering this E part of ESG? Absolutely, Chris. Um, we all have to remember that the E stands for environmental, not just electrifications. Uh, emissions reduction goals can only be met when the entirety of the business workflow is addressed. Most of the CO2 reduction goals consider scope one, two, and three emissions, and not just a company's direct emissions, but we're talking about up and downstream emissions from suppliers as well. It requires collaboration and a vendor network that takes carbon reduction to heart. The Wheels Donlin team works with clients to help them identify, calculate, and modify their indirect emissions by working with their own supplier networks to reduce those greenhouse gases. For example, our national maintenance, maintenance vendor network promotes the safe disposal and recycling of oils, tires, and oil, tires, and other waste. Great. Well, you touched on some of this stuff I'm in this the next question I'm going to ask. I'm going to stick with you, Maria. Um, so in addition to EV market, if the EV market hasn't really caught up with the type of vehicles needed, what are some of the other things fleets can do along this uh, E part of ESG? Um, there are definitely steps that can be taken if fleet electrification is not in the cards just yet for a particular fleet. Uh, you can explore the usage of alternative fuels, um, and those alternative fuels, uh, just to highlight a few of them, compressed natural gas, liquid propane gas, biodiesel, and ethanol are all options that have solutions already in the marketplace. Uh, and, and get back to basics. Dig into the data to help right size and right type the fleet. Often moving to a smaller vehicle can help reduce your emission output. Uh, Telematics is a, is a big component of this as well, too. You can use telematics to identify inefficient driver behaviors like excessive idling. Idling for 10 seconds uses more fuel and produces more emissions than stopping and restarting the, the engine. An hour of idling releases almost four pounds of CO2 into the atmosphere. It really adds up. And simply think about digitizing your fleet. Go as paperless as you possibly can, ideally fully paperless, but let's get rid of the, as much paper as is possible. And if you can't electrify, don't give up. It is coming. There are different ways to support the E in ESG beyond EV adoption. Right. Well, thanks, Maria. I actually, can I stick with you here about, um, you know, the, obviously fleet managers have a lot to think about regarding environmental sustainability overall. Do you think there's any areas that are not getting enough attention? when it comes to environmental sustainability? Thanks for the question, Chris. I think it's uh, very important to, to, to highlight those areas and it's the impact of legislation and regulations. Europe has shown the different incentives make in increasing the adoption of EVs, but it's not just about EVs. Let's go back to that whole environmental rather than just electrification. In the US, Congress is right now considering whether to extend the biodiesel and renewable diesel tax credits through 2025. Qualified entities, which include tax exempt fleets, so your governments can qualify for these, I can receive a $1 per gallon tax credit that can be taken against an entity's fuel tax liability, and excess can be claimed as a direct payment from the IRS. It makes a real difference to the bottom line for many fleets, and we work with industry organizations to monitor these types of legislative issues and advocate on behalf of the fleet industry. Well, you know, I, it, it really feels like we're just kind of at the beginning of really wrapping our heads around what ESG means for fleets. And uh, 
it's kind of this exciting new world that we really have to get more involved in, right? Um, hey, let the, I, Laura, I'm just going to toss it back to you for any closing remarks. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, Maria and Suresh, for your passion and all the work that you do for not only Wheels Downland on our ESG initiatives internally, but how we support our clients. So thank you personally from me as well today. Um, but before we do wrap up, we wanted to give all of you, our listeners to this interview, uh, a challenge. Find out what your company ESG program looks like and start thinking about how you can help. Even if your organization doesn't call it ESG, some of the things that we talked today, I'm sure are components and other initiatives that they have internally that you can actually make a difference. So find out what it may be and try to get involved. And if you already are involved in your company's ESG journey, thank you and keep it going. We all help each other out as we learn and we grow in this space and share those results. Your fleet management company can help, but don't just look at the fleet industry for inspiration. Look at other organizations that you admire, uh, go to their website, check out their ESG related efforts, learn from that and share. And remember, all of us can make an impact. So try to go out and do that. Yeah, you make a really good point about fleets having to expand uh, beyond their, their usual boundaries when it comes to ESG. So I really appreciate that. Uh, well, that's our time for today. Laura, Maria, Suresh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.